Hi, my beloved brothers and sisters. This is John. And uh, today I have a message about life after death, about what happens when you die, and about what I learned from watching uh, a lot of near-death experience testimonies uh, a few months back. But before I do, let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you that... Uh, that life, uh, life is eternal, and you've created us with an eternal purpose. You've created us with an eternal soul. You've created us with a with eternal life as the uh, as the uh, plan. You know, life is eternal. You're eternal. Life is eternal, and we are eternal souls. And so, we just give you praise and glory uh, for the opportunity to know you and to be with you uh, in love and in unity forever and ever. That never ends. So, we just love you so much, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you know, um, we're all promised as Christians uh, that uh, if we believe in Jesus Christ and if we follow after his ways, then we will be inheritors of eternal life. Um, and uh, eternal life is uh, something that is hard to wrap our minds around because we are at this time living in time and space. So we, we are kind of finite in that we look at things in a time frame, and we look at things as, uh, you know, ha everything has an end, everything dies. But uh, it, it goes much deeper than that, and actually time in, there is no time and space. In the long run, everything is eternal. So when we die, uh, we will find out, and we should already know, that everything is eternal and there is no time in eternity so back um back probably about eight nine months ago I was wa I got uh, onto a binge and I was watching near-death experience testimonies and I watched so many of them and they were so interesting there were so many different ones I probably watched all of the major ones on YouTube and I learned a lot and a, a lot of things that happened to people during these during these experiences uh, some people, uh, they end up in hell, and some people, they end up in heaven, and some people, they, and, and some people, they go on a bizarre journey, and some of them are Christians, and they are, some of them are not Christians, and they go on a very bizarre journey that, uh, they can't put into words, and, uh, a lot of times they'll come back, and they, and what they'll, what will happen is they'll experience things that are clearly biblical. They'll experience celestial beings. They'll, superior, they'll experience cherubims. They'll experience uh, seeing a lake of fire, all these things. And a lot of these people actually have these full-blown near-death experiences that seem a very uh, biblical in the, uh, in the uh, Christian sense. And uh, they'll come back, and a lot of times they won't even be, they won't even be given a revelation of what happened. I actually talked to a guy who had a near-death experience. He said he was bit by a snake, and he had a very biblical near-death experience and uh, with a lot of the things that you would find in the Bible. And I talked to him, but he wasn't a Christian, and he refused to believe in Jesus Christ. And he said anybody who believes in the Bible is nuts. Nevertheless, he had a near-death experience where he met a king in a place, and the king uh, told him some things that were all 100% scriptural, and I showed him that. See, a lot of times God will use near-death experiences with certain people, and he won't even reveal that Jesus Christ is the truth, but he makes it very obvious. So, But uh, you can watch a lot of these yourself, and you can find out that, uh, that uh, people go into hell, and it's a lake of fire with eternal, with eternal torture. And some of the things I've heard is that people will burn, and uh, it's like they, they, their skin keeps growing back, and they burn forever. And there's, you know, and the maggot, like Jesus said, that the that the worms, they don't die. They just keep eating you. And, I mean, there's a lot of demons down there, too. They'll tear you up. I mean, nonstop. So you really, you really want to be, you really want to take heed when you hear these kind of warnings. And you really want to do what's the best. And uh, of all the things that I watched... On near death experiences, there was one portion of scriptures after watching probably 50 or 100 of different ones. There was one portion of scripture that burned into my brain of Jesus Christ's life's teachings that matter the most when it comes to what will happen to us when we face God. 
and uh, I want to read what that is. This is the this is what the Holy Spirit led me to. This is the big emphasis that everybody comes comes to uh, have to face when they die. And I'm going to read this to you here now. It's in Matthew 25, 31 through 46. It says that when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all of the angels with him, he will sit on his throne and all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people one from another as a, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, who are blessed of my father, take your inheritance the kingdom uh, prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. And I was a stranger, and you invited me in. And I needed clothes, and you clothed me. And I was sick, and you looked after me. And I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And then the righteous will say to him, Lord, when did, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? And when do we see you sick or in prison and give and come and visit you? And the king replied, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for the very least one of these brothers and sisters of mine, you also did for me. And then he, then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are accursed, into the, into, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. And I was a stranger, and you did not come and invite me in. And I needed clothes, and you didn't clothe me. And I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. And they will answer, Lord, when do we see you hungry and thirsty as a stranger, needing clothes, and sick in prison, and did not help you? And he replied, Truly, I will tell you, whatever you did not for one of these, least of these, you did not for me. And then they will go away to eternal punishment. But the righteous to eternal life. And from what I gathered from all of the near-death experience testimonies that I heard, this is the most important part of Scripture when people face the Lord. Because the Lord, a lot of times, what I've seen is the Lord gives people a review of their life. And when he gives them a review, he shows them all of the times that they dealt with people, other people. Did they close them? Did they help them? Did they spread his love? Did they spread his joy? Did they, did they do good by them when they needed them? This is what God looks for when we die. Sorry, I got a little stunt indigestion. This is what God looks for when we die. And uh, um, people will get a full life review when they die from what I've gathered from near-death experiences. And this is what matters. That, that part, portion of scripture right there. Did you take care of those in need? Did you help those in need? And did you show the love of Christ to those in need? Because if you notice at the very end of that scripture, the goats received eternal punishment and the sheep eternal life. And this is what I learned from watching the near-death experience. The most important thing when you do get your life review is, uh, the, is that parable right there. Um, because that seems to be what everybody... they Everybody in hell usually is in hell for a reason. And they're usually in hell because they hurt people. They tore other people up. They, you know, they did not help people. And they were selfish and self-destructive and destructive to those around them. And those who managed to get into heaven, they had a life review. And God showed them uh, how that they helped the poor and helped the needy and helped other people and, and put others before themselves and... And, uh, and did all these things. And this is, this is what I learned from watching so many near-death experiences. It's so important how we treat other people. We want to be a sheep. We don't want to be a goat. We want God to see us when we step before him. And we want him to see that we, didn't, that we did things for others. That we treated others like we would treat the Lord himself. And because we want to inherit eternal life. 
you know, life goes on forever, and God has prepared for us a place uh, where there is uh, there is everlasting joy and everlasting um, pleasure. Um, and there's you know there's a tree of life that's in the middle of it, and it's uh, you know it's been prepared since Adam and Eve. You know He wanted to give us the Garden of Eden, and uh, you know even though mankind fell, He is still prepared for us. This place that was promised to Adam is still available to us. So let us repent of our sins and have them for, be forgiven, so that when we stand before God, He won't see our sins. And let us also not be goats. Let's not take advantage of the fact that our sins are forgiven and then be goats. Let's be sheep. Let's care for other people. Let's put other people before ourselves. And let's uh, let's uh, feed feed the feed the hungry and clothe the naked. And do all these things as we would do them to Christ himself. Because I assure you that when you die, this is what's going to this is what's going to be important. You're going to get a life review and you're going to look at all these things. And I'm telling you now so you're ready. You know, be a sheep, don't be a goat. You know, you want eternal life, you don't want eternal punishment. So That's my message, guys. And I'm just telling you all these things so that you will know what God expects and what he wants to see out of you because this is what I've gathered and this is what I learned. And uh, I believe this is so important um, when it comes to what we need to know when we die. What we need to know when we die is not what's on the other side. We don't need to know heaven and hell you know, as much as we need to know what God expects of us as humans. We need to know that God wants us to be sheep. He doesn't want us to be goats, you know. Don't take advantage of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for you and think that it's, now it's okay for you to be a goat because your sins are forgiven. You're going to find out when you get to heaven. That's not the case. You need to live as a sheep. Take care of people, love people, bless people, and bear fruit, fruit of the Spirit. God wants to see fruit in your life, fruit that lasts, fruit that's worthy of eternal life, fruit that will remain. And be, and then you will inherit, you know, eternal paradise. And this is true. This is true. So I just love you guys, and I bless you guys in Jesus' name. Pray you have all good day. Amen.